Good evening. Thank you. Welcome no for coming. Thank you for coming. Welcome to the July 24th council meeting. I'm showing that it's 7.37 p.m. Mrs. Arcisi, would you please call the roll? Ms. Darrell. Here. Mr. Engel. Here. Ms. Hanneken. Here. Mr. Molnar. Here. Ms. Tully. Here. Thank you. I would like to ask everyone to stand as Council President Dave Engel leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance, after which I will do tonight's invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Father, first let me say thank you on behalf of all of us who are gathered here today and the many blessings you have bestowed upon our city. I pray for the agenda set before us today. Please give an assurance of what, you, what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work in and around our beloved city of Macedonia. It is in your most blessed name we pray, amen. All right, uh, we have some minutes. Um, do we have any changes to the minutes? If not, do I have a motion to accept? Motion to accept the minutes as prepared by the clerk. Uh, could I say that uh, I have not been able to review these minutes uh, because there are over 30 pages and I don't have, I had to go back to video to look for some. I'd like to delay the approval of the minutes if we can. Uh, I'm happy to withdraw the motion. Without a motion, we'll move forward to acknowledgement of the uh, financial report. Do I have a motion to accept that? Motion to accept the financial report. I would ask that that be removed. The report was just presented late. Okay, and, uh, fine. It's 524 today. I haven't the, had time. On so. the agenda no. is the May, the May well, one. I, okay, the not May the June one. one. Not the June one. Okay, good. Okay. And the May one was sent out yes, a while ago. It was. So I don't, if you I notice on the agenda, it's we just on the, the May. One we just got. The May 31st. Okay, motion to accept the May 31st uh, financial report. So I'll second it. Motion in the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Moving on, the next portion is comments by the public. Um, we ask that you please come to the microphone at the front here, state your name, address, and please try and limit your dissertation to five minutes. Uh, first on the list is Joseph Miglarini. Mayor, I reserve uh, some time at the very end. Uh, this time I have no comments. <laughs> What? The very end of the meeting? No, the very end of all the other All the other ones. All right. Next is um, Terry Hudak. Come on up, Terry. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm here again this evening to uh, give an announcement and an invitation. Uh, the Manor House, we are having another fundraiser. It is going to be August 17th, this time at Casa D'Angelo, just around the corner. And it's going to be uh, from 12 to 4 o'clock. It's on a Sunday afternoon. And uh, the price for the adults will be $10. And then our children 12 and under will be $5. And, uh, we do need all the help we can get financially. And as we all know, uh, the Manor House has been put, been put on the national uh, uh, list in Washington, D.C., historical. So again, I want to just thank you all very kindly for all your help. And may God bless each and every one of us here tonight and all of our families. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right, next on the list is John Hartman. John? Good 
Yeah. Um, hello, Council. My name is John Hartman. Um, I reside at uh, 9474 uh, Shepherd Road, and I'm here to address you today on a concern uh, with my the end of my driveway, uh, my curb. Um, I currently have a pretty steep uh, incline, and I, I tend to bounce off my driveway when I'm pulling in and out of it. Um, I've had uh, issues with cars actually swerving around me uh, because I, of the speed I have to back in and out of it um, and the low visibility I have on the incoming traffic uh, to one side of me. Um, and, uh, you know, I've tried to address the issue on a few occasions, and I, I'm looking more for clarification on next steps forward uh, from the service department or whichever department would be necessary to take care of this issue. Well, I certainly agree with you because, John, just imagine doing that after open heart surgery. <laughs> Low imagine. curbs are not good. They really, really aren't. We have them throughout the city. Mm -hmm. It makes it very, very difficult on all of us. I know that, and I understand exactly what you're talking to because I do the same thing. Jim, do we have any plans in the future to well, address this? I spoke to his mother-in-law. And I, I told her there's one way that we can help. It's a road curb. It's been there since 1994. There's nothing we can do about the curb. I'd have to replace almost 4,000 feet. And I don't okay. think the city will do that. But we can help you with uh, your apron raised about an inch. There's a way to saw cut this stuff. Uh, you could saw cut the curb on an angle to maybe eliminate some of the, the drastic hump that you have there. Uh, as I explained to your mother-in-law, what I will, will do for you is I will get our saw cutting man and we'll go out there and we'll see what we can do. It might even come to a point where uh, you might have to take part of your apron and mm -hmm. change it to adjust it to where we put the curve. Uh, so if you would just give us some time to do that. JD saw cutting is who we use and we've had to do that for other residents in the past. They've paid for it, the residents themselves, mm -hmm. but we get it at a very good price for you. That if you went by yourself, you wouldn't be able to get, but we'll be able to get you a very reasonable price. And that's how we'll be able to help you. If you give us a okay. week or two, we'll be able to address it for you. Oh, yeah, that was all I was going to ask for yeah. a clarification on a, on a timeline. But yeah, you're probably looking at a week or two. We have a lot of projects that are coming up. You know, we're just trying to coordinate everything. And you'll be able to respond to me directly? Well, what I'll be able to do is steps. I will be able to get you the people that will be able to take care of you okay. and help and you. And then you'll and be able to coordinate that. with them and do whatever it takes to, to okay. make it more make it more easy or easier for you to pull in and out. Great. Okay. Okay? Thank you. John, mine went the other way. It went down. I ended up yeah. having it pumped up three times. Yeah, Three different times they had to do it. So it's rough. My, I, I think my baby thinks it's a roller coaster. But, you know, so. No extra charge. My, my wife, not so much. My pregnant wife. Thinks. No. <laughs> okay. But believe me, open heart surgery is the worst because you're, you're in bad shape, and those curbs mm -hmm. are a problem. Yeah. Okay, John. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for your time, Counselor. Um, Joe, would you like to speak now? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you, Mayor. I, other, other than the fact that just uh, it's nice to be here and uh, watch what's going on in the city. Thank you for, uh, for this opportunity. All right. Now, at the bottom of the list, I have Fred Quigley. Fred, are you going to talk tonight? Yeah. Okay. But as it is listed on that thing, I am the last one to speak. Oh, I see. Oh, my. I am the flagpole man. 
I lived at 8581 Alexis Drive in the villas of Terramina, Macedonia, Ohio. My presentation to the council at the last meeting was planned to be my last presentation. I anticipated just moving on to the next phase. However, it seems that some culprit shared my presentation with Joe McLarini. I only shared a hard copy with five members of council and the mayor, but somehow Joe got it. Joe is doing his best to stand in the way of my relaxed and hoped for enjoyment of the fruits of my labors in my retirement at the age of 80. First, Joe tried to deny me the right to fly an American flag on a flagpole in my own front yard, which ended up going viral on the internet in the US and around the world. When all was said and done, I was allowed to keep my flagpole. But now he is telling me that I can't enjoy my constitutional First Amendment rights of free speech. He does this through misrepresentation of my words and of, or my intent and his own view and or interpretation of what he imagines I have said. Following is a letter that I have received. It's a letter from the attorney, from Joe Miglarini. I have been retained by Joseph Miglarini regarding your false allegations and continued harassment, along with other related issues within the villas of Terramina in the city of Macedonia. It has been brought to our attention by others that you have on various occasions made public statements about Mr. Miglarini that are defamatory and slanderous in nature. These injurious remarks were clearly made to persuade, persuade others that my client was dishonest, etc. Your actions are reckless and represent a malicious disregard of the truth, and as such, you have violated the defamation laws of the state of Ohio. You have personally disseminated information which is misleading. This conduct has caused my client time and money for which you may be liable. Also, your comments that Mr. Miglarini considers the showing of the American flag as being a mere decoration, unsightly, and a detriment to the appearance of the development is a blatant attempt to ruin his reputation. You may wish to immediately seek legal of counsel so that you can make necessary retractions and minimize the damage that you have already caused through your libelous and slanderous statements. In the meantime, we will continue to investigate and gather affidavits as to what make, make a decision of whether to pursue a legal remedy. You are not only seeking restrictions of your previous remarks, but putting you on notice that if you continue to make derogatory and defamatory statements regarding Mr. Miglarini or the Villas of Terra Media Project, they will be confirmation of your injurious intent and we will have no choice but to bring action against you for this. Con if McLarini and Mayor Kuchta continues this to bring this type of malicious, frivolous, defamatory, slanderous, and unreasonable attacks against me, just like he did with the neighbors during the flag episode, I will be forced to continue my efforts to deal with those who are being nasty, uncaring, unprofessional to the elderly and to the handicapped in the villas. As to public statements of defamatory and slanderous nature, in my letter of 12, June 12th, I dealt with just the facts of what is happening to me and to my neighbor, Al Bell. As to dishonesty, these are, the, these are Mr. Miglarini's words, not mine. Facts are facts. He is the one disregarding the truth. For example, Joe told the residents at the meeting that the city requires a three-foot offset at the rear of the property. I checked with the building department at the time. No such rule exists. He told an untruth. 
There are others that I could quote. As to malicious disregard of the truth, who is the one being malicious? Sending me this letter is itself malicious. And whose truth? As I said, I have related just the facts as I see them. As to violating the defamation laws of the state of Ohio, what about my U.S. constitutional First Amendment right of free speech that he is violating? On top of that, counsel encourages comments from the public. I just respond to that opportunity. And that is what I gave. My comments of how I see actions and reactions playing out in the city of Macedonia. As to the American flag as being a mere decoration, unsightly or a detriment to the appearance of the development, these are Mr. McLaurie's words in his roles and regulations, not mine. As to my injurious intent, again, Mr. McLaurie's words, not mine. Is he capable of reading my mind? My intent has been expressed from the very beginning when Joe tried to deny me my right to fly the American flag on a flagpole. And his unfounded accusations are expressed in numerous previous comments. And then as a bully, I'll show you, he denied me six or seven times the right to build a deck behind my house, all for different reasons. Also, the last paragraph of my letter dated June 12th, I said, get off my back or buy me out and I'll be gone. Then came along Al with his sore problem with Chris and Joe. At this point, I became pastoral. I was concerned about the little guy. My intent became fighting Joe the millionaire against Al the commoner. Unless McLeary gets involved with some common sense and some compassion, using Joe's big words to me on TV, if Mr. McLeary, instead of Mr. Quigley, could see reason. See reason, Mr. McLeary. Be reasonable. <coughs> Buy me out on my terms and to my satisfaction, and I'll be gone. And you can continue to run Macedonia any way you want. My final comment, maybe the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. A copy of the attorney's letter went to none other than Mayor Donald Kuchta. I guess I know who that culprit is now. Yes, Mr. Kuchka himself. And now it is Mayor Donald Kuchka, I guess, who knew what was going on all the time. And it's unlikely, and now it is unlikely to end unless council can get the mayor and Mr. Rigley, and Mr. Riglarini to see reason and to do what is right, what is the right thing for all concerned. The city, Mr. Riglarini, for me, and for my old neighbor, Al Bell, with his sore problems. Mr. Riglarini caused this problem. It should, he should be responsible to end it for the peace and the welfare of all. That's my record of my facts. Any documentation <clears throat> that passes over my desk, Fred, is public record. Any documentation, our law director can verify that for you. In fact, you're on public record right now because it was all taped. I know I am on public record. I know I'm on TV because well, I, I'm not. I'm not me. fighting. Not. I'm not fighting with you. I'm just explaining okay. to you. This is all public record. Well, okay. So we don't need to debate it. I've already given you ten minutes. Well, I know that, but I wrote my name down twice. <laughs> I see. Smart. That's smart. Oh my God. <laughs> the letter. The letter has carbon copy. Or copy. Went to you, which means you were involved and related to all of this. Well, absolutely. As mayor, I'm involved in everything that happens, right? Well, you haven't done that every other time that I've talked to you. No. Okay. We're going to move on with. Um... Wait, I, can I have an opportunity to say <laughs> I think not. No, we cannot. 
I can't deny it to him. He's yeah, a public citizen. I'm the last person on that list. Well, well you don't right. determine that, Fred. What? You don't determine who's last on the list. He has to be Excuse last. Me, the dictator Mick Marini does it fine. Thank you. Now I know exactly where I stand with the city. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I, I'm not going to stand up here and, uh, and try to address all the issues that uh, Mr. Quigley has uh, so misinformed, misstated and misinformed, uh, again, this audience. Um, but nevertheless, I, I just want to talk about the, the Villas of Terramina. Villas of Terramina is an active adult community. I started the project in 2007. We have uh, currently, we're close to getting to uh, nearly close to 50 homes being built in there. We have a, a wide variety of people that are moving in from Hudson, from Solon, from Highland Heights. Uh, uh, they absolutely just love the community. They all follow the rules and regulations that they signed off on when they came into the subdivision, those covenants and restrictions, as it relates to either flags or landscaping or whatever the case is. And they follow those rules and regulations. They don't just sign them and then deny uh, or, or, or then not follow them, they, they follow the rules and regulations. So I, I appreciate the, the fact that we have a great number of nice people that live in the community. I'm sorry that Mr. Quigley has uh, such a, a negative uh, attitude as he does, but I, I also need to tell you that our, our um, builder, which is Chris Copeland, he's another Macedonia resident, uh, Copeland's Homes, he's done a very good job. Uh, I don't have anything to do with building homes in the subdivision. Those homes are contracted directly between Copeland's Homes and the individual homeowner. I own the lots. I sell the lots to, uh, to either the individual homeowner and then Chris ultimately then builds the home. So in Mr. Quigley's situation, he dealt directly with Copeland's Homes. His neighbor who he's talking about, which is Al Bell, he dealt directly and contracted directly with Chris Copeland's, not and with Joe Miglarini. No, not with Joe Miglarini. The contracts yeah. are available. Mr. Quigley. I'm sorry. I, uh, I didn't interrupt you while you were speaking. I did, I, did, I, did I jump up and say anything to, while no, you were speaking? So could you please uh, give me the uh, courtesy of not doing Go the ahead. same to me? Go Thank you. Continue. So if, the, if anybody would like to check the records, they could certainly see that that's the case and that uh, I have nothing to do with the building of the homes. Um, again, I would invite anyone to come to the Villas of Terramina and speak with all of the residents that do live in there. Uh, it's a very nice community. Everybody does get along with each other. Um, they, it, it's, a, it's a very, very nice community. And that's about as much as I possibly can say about it, contrary to those statements that are being made uh, by Mr. Quigley. So thank you for this opportunity. All right, I'm we're not the one who stood and watching on the screen. Melody and everybody against me. Sorry. Now well, let's move into pending and or new legislative items, starting with ordinance number 45 2014. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to offer ordinance number 45 2014 for its third reading by title only. An emergency ordinance providing for the review of the charter by the Charter Review Commission fixing its duties and establishing a procedure for the review. Uh, before we ask to pass and post, if I may, <clears throat> there was a lot of discussions about conversations I had with you, Joe, or let you know uh, my feelings about legislations. Um, do you feel that that uh, this legislation is accurate because it was not written by you? No, it is not accurate. And not, in what way? It is not consistent with the way we've done it in the past 20 years, every five years. It, it calls for things that have never been called for before, like each council person being given a opportunity to appoint someone. Uh, it is inaccurate as far as the time periods that they put on for the uh, Charter Review Commission to act and, uh, and pass it as an ordinance. It's not accurate as it relates to the number of members uh, needed to put it on the ballot. Uh, no, 
um, that's, that's about it. Do you, did you mention at all that uh, the mayor did not have a chance to veto um, who was chosen because that was the topic of discussion? I explained that in the past when the mayor uh, authorized council members to make suggestions that the mayor and council would make a joint decision as to who each council person was nominating or putting on there. That your opportunity to do that is being taken away in this section. The charter says the mayor and council have the right to appoint, not individual council persons. All right, well, we have some amendments to this tonight, so we'll proceed from this point, and then you can see if we're falling within those restrictions. Well, I drafted for you the, the way we've done it in the past and the proper way to do it. Those are on the agenda as well. Well, the thing is, if this, these um, amendments don't address all the issues you feel it has, then the other two pieces of legislation do, then it would be your recommendation to go with those, correct? The best way to correct all of the inaccuracies inconsistent with the Charter and Ohio Code is to adopt the ones that I drafted, not the ones that Sylvia Okay, may I proceed? Yes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that we amend the following words in the following sections of this ordinance 45-2014. The last sentence in, in section one says uh, that uh, seven days from the passage that we will have uh, the commission members convoked, I have, I am asking to modify those words to 30 days. In section six, and this is per the, the comments from Mr. Demert, I am requesting that we change the words after upon the least on the first page under section six uh, from three fifths to two thirds. And in section six in the last part of that sentence, again, changing from three-fifths <coughs> to two-thirds. In section seven, I'm asking that we uh, change the number of months from three months to six months. After appointment, the, the co co commission would serve for that period. That is, those are the amendments that I'm requesting to the language in this uh, item. And let me say that I have, I have spoken to a number of former council members and uniformly they have said that the mayor has not had the opportunity to veto and we did not make joint appointments. They indicated that the mayor appointed his representative and they reappointed their own representative. And so Mr. Demert's interpretation uh, seems to be based on the change this year in who's on the council. So if I could say that, then let's go. I have made a motion. Do I have a second? Second. You're not the mayor. My God. The mayor calls a second. Can I make, can I make one request on these amendments? Right. Section one, um, we really need to delete the whole bottom sentence after being appointed. That has never been done in the past. We have never set a time limit. We have never asked for voter registration. We have never um, asked for proof of residence. Um, the other thing is the language, I think, in the ordinance that traditionally is used for the beginning part of Section 1 is a little more um, what the language of the Charter states, that it says consist of seven members, one who shall be a member of council, and six who shall be residents, mm -hmm. all of whom shall be registered voters, and all of whom shall be appointed by the yeah. mayor and council. It doesn't go into um, council gets to appoint a person and mayor gets to appoint a person. None of that was ever addressed in the charter and stated that way. That's an interpretation. That has been in practice since it was these charter but commissions. But that's your interpretation. And that, well, you know, the interpretation of other council members I spoke in, to. In the mm -hmm. one that came from the law department that talks about a veto, so I'm not sure where that came from. What veto? That's never been a discussion in the one that the law department drafted. But I would amend that we get rid of that entire last sentence 
from after being appointed and providing proof of residence and voter registration, and then seven days or 30 days, I, you know, you've got a committee of people who take this extremely seriously, the one I served on and the ones after that. These aren't people who take it lightly. So I think, you know, you appoint the right people, it goes forward without any issues. You know, you're putting a lot of ifs, ands, and buts here. I just don't understand why we have to have the you write it, Sylvia, instead of interpretation by our law department, as it has been in the past. Well, the interpretation by the law department uh, is actually what I used as the basis for this. I went to the, uh, the ordinances and I, I picked up the 2009 ordinance. I, I am more specific confirming what has been the practice, which is the council appoints each member that they have and you appoint a member. And as far as the length of time, uh, 30 days, uh, I had seven days there originally because I wanted to see us move forward with it for the November election. That's clearly not possible. But I also would like this to, to be able to be done within six months. So I thought that 30 days would be reasonable for convoking the, uh, the Charter to Review Commission. It's, that gives people uh, several, you know, 30 days to, to confirm their appointments and to get everybody together. So I think that's reasonable. Mr. Deemer, the 30-day rule that, or provision that Sylvia is discussing or Ms. Hannigan is discussing, that, would, is, that wouldn't be precluded by other ordinances in the city or precluded by charter. Would you agree with that? The charter does not state that they have to convene within well, well, 30 I, I days to be that, appointed. I understand that, but the fact that the charter is, 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 uh, leaves that out, uh, it would seem to be that, that then the city could adopt a rule that says we're going to start this within 30 days and not violate charter. W it, would you agree with that, Mr. Deemer? Can you supplement the charter by uh, ordinance to require it to be done within a time period greater than Charter does. I'm not sure that. Well, I the charter do, is, it doesn't it doesn't address that at all. Yeah. So it would be it would seem that it, the charter when the charter doesn't address something, it would seem that that then legislation can be brought up. So the question is, since the charter does not address that issue, wouldn't would it be a violation of charter to say we want to start within 30 days? Council Council shall adopt its own rules. It says right here. You right. Right. I know. right, we I understand that. I'm not sure. It's it's possible that you could add that requirement as being reasonable. But what happens if they don't comply with it? Well, I don't know what the repercussions would be. The Supreme Court had that issue with the legislature and the school board taxes four times, right? So hopefully we won't have to address that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, okay. All right, we have a motion on the floor and amendments that are on the floor right now. Um, do I have a second? Well, I have a question. What, is, um, what are we doing about what Jan wants to do? I, I, I'm just I asking don't. to remove that entire last sentence. Yes. The but one I that's have in a yellow. motion saying that, as I understand it, my motion is now just saying we want to change it to 30 days. That's all. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Is, does your motion also include the change from three fifths to two thirds? Yes. Maybe, mm -hmm. Correct. Maybe what we need to do is do one subject at a time. I know it's more tedious. It, your amendment is changing. The only thing you're changing in there is from seven to thirty days. Correct. Is that correct? That is correct. Who is um, going to be validating the proof of residence and voter registration that you are now asking folks to present? that they didn't have to in the past? Well, I thought that it could be done either by the commission itself, that people, when the, when, the, when the meeting is convoked, they can bring that proof of registration, or we could have the clerk do it. Well, usually there's a piece of legislation that appoints the members, which mm -hmm. is the second piece of legislation that right. the law department had composed, which identifies the people that are gonna be named to the committee. 
Okay. So would you ask, because we've never done this before, never have had a need to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't see there was any abuse in all the years that the Charter Review has happened, so I'm not mm -hmm. sure why it's there. How are you going to implement it? Because you could have this go infinitum if you appoint someone that's not or can't find this or can't find that. I mean, you're, you're setting a 30-day limit. Yes. How do you work that into your process? Okay, I, I've just suggested two ways. We could either have the clerk validate that, have them have the name submitted and it validated by the clerk. There's an easy way to check if you're a registered voter in your, in your residence. And, or we could uh, have people come to the meeting, the first meeting with that information. Either way, it would work. And what is proof of residence? You need to be very specific. Do I get my mail to live there? Or is it a utility bill? Or is it my well, it could be the same as mortgage bill? I mean, you can't just put a word there and not have specifics behind right. it. Okay. But, but when you register your kids at school, you got to take <laughs> well, I understand. everything but the kitchen sink there. But so. if you're a registered voter, they do have your voting address. And that should constitute proof of residence because you can't be a registered <coughs> voter in Macedonia. Unless I, you I would dispute that based on my daughter moved and never changed her residence and well, still shows okay. on her rolls as a registered voter. I understand, but she, she didn't be follow up on charter. it, so she doesn't vote, right. but. We're probably not going to vote. We're not going to appoint people out of town. I, I think it's easier if you just remove that sentence and not worry about it. Otherwise, the, you need to put some more controls around it. I, the sentence, if I may, Jan, yeah. um, I, I think Sylvia took it from the from the actual charter that yes. that talks about the qualifications. Yes, so I did. It would seem to me that since it's in the charter, it, we really would not need it in this piece of legislation because it's already charter required. So maybe as a way to find a compromise on this one issue, uh, we would, uh, maybe the amendment could be that uh, the, just about the, the, the charter review commission will meet no later than six, 30 days after the passage of this ordinance. Okay, I can do that. Does that work, Jan? Yeah. So you're removing mm -hmm. all the language right. because the person who appoints them really has the onus right. to make so, sure they're so registered you, voter. We have in the past. And, and okay. Tell right. me to be quiet when you want me to. We will start with after charter review. We'll, we'll start crossing that out. Okay. And, and then it will to where it says <coughs> members will be. And we'll say the uh, first session of charter review. Uh, will commence no later than 30 days from the passage of this ordinance. So, so you're looking at the well, end of August. Well, right. Days. Does that bring up a timing of appointments? Well, do we have a meeting within yeah, 30 days for appointments? Meeting, your next meeting, you're, you're on summer recess. So we're, we're in summer recess before we're, we're back before summer. Yeah, yeah Ms. Tully just asked about the appointments. Right, but we would be back by the end of August to get, make our appointments and get them off. And your anticipation is that no, there'll be just a one, two, three yes on the vote. My, my concern is you're saying 30 days from the day you pass it. If you pass it today, that's 30 days. Do we have enough time then to make our appointments, mm -hmm. get that read one, two, three, and approve so that these people are following the letter of the law that is set in this ordinance? I don't want to set the, the commission up to fail either. Well, I don't either, and so that's why I was making the, the suggestion. If you suggest a different time, then we'll, we can talk about it, but I don't see why 30 days is an issue. Well, logically, logically, we're making all these amendments and changes when further on in the agenda is two pieces of legislation that would just appoint the Charter Commission as it has been since the city's inception. Okay, I will be perfectly happy to uh, to do as you're suggesting, Dave, and we can change the number to 36 so it's past the August 28th meeting. Is that a satisfactory? Why well, even have a timeline? Well, I understand, but I'm ta offering to put it beyond that date, and, and people will be appointing their members, I'm sure, sometime well prior to that. Why don't you make it 45? Because that gives time for any discussion. 30 days puts us beyond. Um, Today is the 24th. That would 
24th, we don't have a meeting again until the 28th of August. So if you're going to do it, make it 45 days. That way you have ample time for any discussion. Okay, 45 days it is. Okay, so. Okay. If I may, uh, could I? Please, I'm sorry. Could I repeat what? Okay, I move that we, okay. I move that we amend the language in section one to say the following. Uh, deleting the words after being appointed and providing proof of residence and voter registration and beginning the sentence with the Charter Review Commission members will be convoked into session by Charter Review Commission Council member no later than 45 days after the passage of this ordinance. And in section six, we change three-fifths in both places to two-thirds and in section seven, the Charter Review Commission will, excuse me, the change will be from three months to six months, okay? So do we have, if I, that's the amendment that I'm proposing and, and I'll make, make a it. second. Okay. All right, we have an amendment and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, I'd just like to bring up one more point. This uh, ordinance, this piece of legislation got its first reading in April. And um, it's now several months later and still at the last minute we're making changes when all we have to do is pass ordinances created by our law department consistent with what has happened in the past. With that being said, uh, what's your pleasure? I move that we pass and post ordinance 45, 2014, according to law. Second. Uh, yeah. You can say second. No, I was just going to say as amended. <laughs> Again, as amended. The section one first sentence is changing what has been done in the past as now each council person will have their own nominee for the commission. You will not have a say so on that. I, right. Just so you understand. I, I think though in the past, I understand what you're saying, Joe, but I think in the past that, that's how we have done yeah. it. Yes. In the mayor. Well, if it's no, that been that way in the past, what's wrong with the past legislation? No. That's all I'm saying. Well, yeah. uh, it doesn't work. Because, because we're just being specific. Debate, because now you can discuss those appointees before they are made. If you're not happy with one of the appointments, you can veto the whole legislation. You're better off debating the appointees now rather than vetoing it because you don't like one or two or three appointments. But I think what council is, uh, some members of council are saying that in the past there's been no debate. Everyone, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the way we've done it in the past is everyone puts their name in and nobody complains about it and, and we deal mayor, with it. Yeah, but the mayor wasn't obligated to not complain about it. They all made agreements with each other. I, I don't know what the agreement was other than name your, name your person. Yeah. Uh, there was along with whoever was being oh. named, yeah. right. and, which apparently he doesn't want to do this time. I don't know that. Just well, saying this is new language that's not all right. consistent with the chair. Okay. Okay. So in other words, it will create that problem. That's the only reason we're debating this. That's okay. well, well, I thought, Mayor, you, I thought Mr. Deemert had told me that that's what you wanted to do. You wanted mm -hmm. to have the right to object to who council may name, and then you're saying you said in public in work session no no you didn't you didn't want to object to that that wasn't your problem so, so no, I, I i'm totally confused at this point on that in issue. the work session i said that our law directors create created legislation consistent with the way we've always done it and that's the only objection i have to this because this ordinance has been debated for several months and it's still being debated tonight, and all we have to do is pass the other two uh, pieces. Uh, and I don't see where there would be any problem. Are we um, kind of hinting that there might be somebody that's appointed that I wouldn't want? No. Because every citizen has the right to serve. I don't see myself vetoing somebody. All I was reporting was that Mr. Demert had said that to me. Yeah, or at least how that's how I interpreted it. And then I ask you tonight in work session, 
and you said no, Mr. Deemer was wrong. You didn't want to have the right to object to whoever people on council vote. So I said that point. was Mr. Deemer's interpretation. Well, what's your opinion? That's Dave, I guess. Dave, what I said was that the the changes that have been created here are contrary to the charter, and gave you an example that why it's contrary. That the mayor and council have always agreed. If the mayor didn't agree with somebody, you want to point the last time five years ago or whenever, you probably would say, okay, I'll nominate somebody else. And then the mayor agrees with it. So in this situation, you're mandating it by law that he has to accept whoever you nominate. All right. And that's not what the charter says. So, I mean, there may be no problem. I'm yeah. just saying okay. this. Okay. If the okay. mayor accepts everyone's appointments and he's not unhappy with it, he won't veto the ordinance. All right. Okay. One of your recommendations then be that this Charter Review Commission, when they get to section number 13, look to see if they want to add all these so we're not into interpretations every five years of whoever's sitting in the council DS. Sure, that's a good idea. If you're on here, you've got to address this. It, this yeah, otherwise, it depends on who sits up here in five years of how this charter goes. Let's vote. It hasn't been a problem let's, for 25 let's, years, so I don't know why it's good. I, there is a, I move to pass and post. Was there a second? I did. Dave, he okay. did. Roll call. Ms. Darrell. Yes. Mr. Engel. Yes. Ms. Hannigan. Yes. Mr. Uh, Molnar. I have to listen to everything. The one fact that I'm bothered by is I got this amendment today at 6.30. I didn't have a chance to oh really commit some thought to this, and that's my hang-up right now is I don't really know which way I want to go. So I'm going to abstain. Uh, Ms. Telly. Yes. I think it's important we start this procedure, but I caution that we continue to put on our own interpretations and rules and regulations. This is for the people to work, not the five of us up here. Moving on to ordinance number 47, 2014. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, uh, I move that we pass and post ordinance 47, 2014. Um, excuse me, <laughs> where am I at here? For the third reading. I, I, w I move that we, I'm offering for third reading ordinance number 47, 2014 uh, by title only. An emergency ordinance amending sections 18103 a 18104-18106-A, and 18114-A of the codified ordinance, ordinances of the City of Macedonia, Ohio, in order to increase the cur city's current income tax rate to that which existed last year, 2013 at two and a half, two and one quarter percent, excuse me, for road improve, improvements and stormwater projects and providing for the 100% uh, resident tax credit and submitting the same to the electors on November 4th, 2014. All right, I'd just like to state that all this um, really does is it does not institute this tax, it allows it to go to the ballot. Um, so, with that being said, what's your pleasure? I move we pass and post ordinance number uh, 47, 2014, uh, according to law. Second. Roll call. Ms. Darrell. No. Mr. Engel. Taxes are always one of the hardest things to vote on. They're obviously everyone has an opinion and they certainly affect everyone in the city to different degrees, whether it's an income tax or a real estate tax. In this particular case, it's, it's an income tax. And we've been told that uh, people who live in the Macedonia and work outside of the city, it's their, their credit is gonna be increased. And so only the people who are really gonna be affected are those people who are paying, who actually live in the city and work in the city or those people who work in the city only and their income tax is going to be increased. That, that, I think that sets up 
a lot of uh, division and friction. If everybody's going to be taxed, uh, we all should be taxed equally, and, and, and I, I have a problem with that. Uh, the mayor has said that this isn't for a vote for the taxes. It's just allowing citizens to vote. I understand there's a little bit of logic with that. I also understand that some people say that People who are elected to council have an obligation to investigate, evaluate, educate themselves, and make a determination. And by voting for a tax, you're, in, a, in essence, endorsing that tax and saying to the citizenry, we need that tax. Uh, the city, as your business or your family, can always use more money. There's no, that's, that's, that's a given. But there's also an obligation to live within your means. Uh, we, have a, we have a plan that, uh, that I felt that when we passed the three-year tax, uh, I guess four or five years ago, whatever it was, that was going to allow us to move forward, and I think it has allowed us to move forward. And as of, when the rec tax falls off, I think we'll be in even a better position. Uh, the taxes uh, are rebounding much more than what Rita projected. Uh, <coughs> and so we're, this is a moving target at this point, and I am not convinced that the taxes, an increase of taxes, are within this, the best interest of the city of Macedonia. Uh, and I, I'm not going to take the easy ride out and say, I'll let the citizens decide. I think people voted for Dave Engel because they wanted Dave Engel to make decisions. They wanted Dave Engel to educate himself. And if they don't like the decisions, well, then vote Dave Engel mm -hmm. out or, who, or whomever you don't like who's making the decisions. But I'm not one of the persons who says, I'll just pass the buck. It, it reminds me, and I'm not here to talk religion, of, of, of Pilate in the Bible when he said, this is what I'm going to decide, but I'm washing my hands. It's really your decision. I, I, can't, I can't live with that. So I'm voting no. Ms. Hennigan? Uh, I normally don't speak this long, but I do have something prepared on this topic because I have, when this year started, I was concerned based on the projected downturn that we were to have in our income taxes, but I felt that we needed to look at what the reality was and we have done that. And so I'm going to be voting no, and I'd like to explain why. First, uh, the increase is not needed. Macedonia income tax revenues have rebounded due to economic improvement Macedonia's 2014 income tax revenues are much higher than projected, and revenues are actually less than a half a percent below 2013, and they're 17.3 percent above 2012 income tax collections at this point. And in both of those cases, we had the extra quarter percent on. We don't have it on now, but we're still collecting at the level of revenues that we did when we had that quarter percent on. It is very likely that our revenues will be close to, it could be 8.2 or 8.3 million this year. This means we will likely have more than 1.1 million above the original RITA 2014 revenue projections. Two, maintaining our income tax at the 2% level allows Macedonia to remain competitive in attracting new businesses and with surrounding and, and be competitive with surrounding communities because most of the other communities in our region are at the 2% income tax level. Going to a two and a quarter percent tax would make us less attractive as a business destination and might depress our income tax revenues since a lot of them come from net profits tax from businesses. Third, the council uh, is basically continuing our commitment to our residents and especially to our working families that we will not raise taxes unless they are urgently needed. And we have a two and a half million dollar carryover this year plus <coughs> revenues that are well above projections so there is no urgent need. We, in addition, we've talked a lot about road uh, programs this year we could add another road program, uh, another road to our projects even this summer. We've decided not to do that from a timing standpoint. 
but it, uh, but next year we will, based on these projections, and it's likely to happen that we'll be able to follow the commitments to, uh, to roads and stormwater that are already been recommended by the building and engineering department. We can anticipate, uh, and uh, this is fifth, we can anticipate uh, that 2015 uh, road and stormwater projects can be fully funded. Sixth, going forward, our debt load will be reduced by 1.1 million due to the completed payoff of the City Hall and Recreation Center construction projects in 2016. This will free up 1.1 million in additional funds for required capital projects without a tax increase. Now, the last thing, and I think it's important, it is advisable to make a long-term commitment to capital projects by, re by replacing the expiring quarter percent that is currently paying off the Recreation Center construction bonds with a continuing quarter percent tax dedicated to capital projects, including roads. That way, we can fund a long-term pro road program and cri critical capital investments for Macedonia and still retain a maximum 2% income tax rate. So I'm very happy to say that we don't have to raise these taxes, and I'm voting no. Mr. Molnar, keep your papers on. My thoughts on this are, are, are pretty simple. It's looking at where we're at now and having a plan. When I first came on council, we had a five-year plan. Quickly found out within one year that that five-year plan wasn't going to work because we rely on income tax, and income tax fluctuates. We were quickly in a situation where we were faced with a deficit and we needed to lay off employees. Kind of gut-wrenching when you sit around and look at people you know and you work with every day and the police that protect you and the firemen that can save you and the service department that serves you and all the other employees and say we're going to lay you off we don't have a plan for the future this is all based on well we'll see how things go with taxes to be exact and concise we're down a half a percent from last year when we talk about eight million dollars it's not eight million eight million dollars unencumbered where's two and a half and that's can go pretty quickly the one major thing I want to point out is right now we need a million dollar ladder truck for our fire department, the people that save lives. And we're saying we don't know how we're going to fund that. It's a little concerning to me. This would have freed up money in the general fund to put you know, funds into that so we can take care of these problems and we, get, we have vehicles that are part of the safety committee to take care of people. Also. That doesn't include the 33 roads that are rated in poor condition. All this would have done was given the people a right to vote to say, yes, we want to put this on, or no, we don't. You get 100% credit. The people that work in this community, drive on our streets, they can have a little piece of that, too, to where they can help pay for those streets. I don't think that's unfair. When we did this last time, a person making $50,000 paid about 100 bucks extra a year. We're talking less than $10 a month. I don't like to give more than a dollar or anything from it. I, I have, but the reality is that's a very small amount of money to help our problems. The people on Barkdale, Blueberry, Bonnie, Bradford, Brookdale, Bruce, Meadowlawn, Roseland, Pendleton, Crow, Driftwood, Highland, Valley View, Elizabeth, Firestone, Fox Hill, Merlin, Newport, North Melody, Robin, Saybrook, Shepherd, Skyland, Stone Ridge, Summer, Swallow, Twinsburg Road, and Valley View Road, and Waters Drive. You officially do not have a voice. This council has just told you that you are not allowed to vote. We're not going to put it in your hands to say, we're going to correct your problem. 33 roads. Do you know how long it takes to fix 33 roads? $2.5 million will probably take care of a couple of them. Don't forget about our ladder truck. Have a safe day. Yes. Ms. Tully. I think my visual says where my thought would be. The B streets, I have talked about them for years. Barkdale, Bruce, Bonnie, the ones that he all listed. This comes from Barkdale. I run those streets. I know the holes. I know where to try and go around the holes. I haven't touched those roads since the 50s. This is your opportunity to say whether you would be willing to pay more income tax or not. I'd have to pay it. I'm still working. My husband just got a part-time job. He'd have to pay it. 
And we're willing to do that because we know the roads are what makes this community. There are a lot of houses up for sale and a lot of them have pretty big holes in front of their yards. I think it's pretty difficult to get someone interested in buying your house if the road isn't fixed. We talk about we have more money. We have a two and a half million dollar carryover. Just last month we were told we can't spend a dime of that. Now all of a sudden we can open the purse strings. So we got two roads approved and I'm very happy that we finally got the two worst approved. But we need to put together a plan of how we go in the future. And the talk has been by one council member of, well, we'll borrow money. We're not going to borrow money anymore. We want to put the money in the bank and set it aside. So the two and a half million that we have today, you need to take a half a million, put it aside, not touch it for any unencumbered. Otherwise, you don't have a road program. But that only takes care of next year. What about the year after and the year after? And if we have another winter, like we just had, we're looking at more roads being <coughs> detrimental to our health. Let me real quick talk about the Parks and Rec. When the Parks and Rec expires, it is specifically for the Parks and Recs. You can't automatically renew it. It goes back to the voters. So before we, we talk about Parks and Recs and we'll just take their money and use it, it's kind of like when the half percent or the quarter percent expired, it's gone, unless you vote to put it back on. My vote is yes. I think this, you know, we have Dr. Jenkins who comes in and brings us little pieces of concrete where his wife has fallen. I think this says it better than anybody. My vote would be yes, and I apologize. Moving on. Ordinance number 56-2014. I'd like to offer ordinance 56 2014 for its third reading by title only second in ordinance appropriating funds for use by the uh, by the service department for the road repair at 383 Jane's Lane Nick you want to explain this please yes the I had put this piece of legislation through for a, a strip patch on Jane's Lane the roads pretty much annihilated, it's gone, there's raveling, it's just gone. Uh, in our talks, when we had our so-called windfall of money come in, we put some money in for strip patching and we were able to add this into that project. So essentially, this will get completed. We're gonna vote this down, but that will be completed in the strip patch program this year. So all we're doing is cleaning up what we have on here to say no to this piece of legislation, but it is on the docket to be completed this year. So I move that we pass and post according to law, ordinance 57, 2014. Second. Roll call. Ms. Darrell. No. Ms. Durango. No. Ms. Hannikin. No. Mr. Mulner. No. And Ms. Toll. No. Moving on to ordinance number 57-2014. I'd like to offer ordinance 57-2014 for its third reading by title only. In ordinance, amending 20, the uh, 2014 annual appropriations ordinance number 2614, transferring certain funds from 101-101 to 101-201. I'd like to make an amendment to Ordinance 57. Uh, Scott, we're pulling that from the general fund, and this is funds for training in the service department. Yes, sir. You just want to say you're going to increase fund uh, 101, 201, 5570 to $1,500 just to increase an appropriation for that. And that dollar amount was 1500 Yes. All right. What he said. Yeah. I figured. <laughs> no, I just need a second. Second. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And now, what's your pleasure? I move that we pass and post the coin of law ordinance 57 2014. Second. Old call. Ms. Darrell? Yes. Mr. Engel? Yes. Ms. Hannikin? Yes. Mr. Molnar? Yes. And Ms. Tully? Yes. Moving on, Ordinance 62, 2014. Um, 
Mr. Mayor, I'd like to offer ordinance number 62-2014 um, for its second reading by title only, please. In ordinance amending sections 12102D, 12102Q, 123 and 12303 of the codified ordinances of the City of Macedonia, Ohio, in order to conform with the most recent version of the Charter. And what's your pleasure? It's only second. Oh, reading. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right, next is Ordinance 69, 2014. Well, this, is, this is the, uh, the charter review. Which one? Since we've I'd already. Make a motion to table yeah. Ordinance 69, 2014. Second. Well, yeah. that'll get rid of it. It's never right. been entered. Yeah, it offered. hasn't. A, oh, Mr. Deemer, it wasn't, it wasn't offered, so please install so it. can be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. It's up to the mayor. He has the right to introduce legislation. Okay. okay. This is right. legislation he's proposing to be introduced, so we can introduce it and vote on it, vote it down if you like, uh, or the mayor can leave it on the agenda to determine what he's going to do with the other ordinance. I think we should call the question tonight. What's the number? 69? 69. Mm -hmm. Well, it's at first reading, if we read it. Right. Who'd you have reading it? I'd like to offer Ordinance 69, 2014 for its first reading by title only. An ordinance providing for the review of the charter by the Charter Review Commission, fixing its duties and establishing a procedure for the review. Next is resolution number 70, 2014. I'd like to offer resolution number 70 for its first reading by title only, please. A resolution confirming the appointments to the Charter Review Commission. Resolution number 71, 2014. I'd like to offer resolution 71, 2014 for its first, second, and third reading by title only. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A resolution declaring the month of August 2014 Kids Month in the County of Summit. And what's your pleasure? I move that we pass and post according to law resolution 71 2014. Second. Roll call. We did first, second, and third reading oh, okay, on sorry. it. Yeah. Roll call. I know. Ms. Darrell. Yes. Mr. Engel. Yes. Ms. Hannigan. Yes. Mr. Molnar. Yes. Ms. Teller. Yes. Moving on, resolution number 72, 2014. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to offer re uh, resolution number 72, 2014 for its uh, first. first reading um, by title only. I, I, wait, I want this. I want we're, we're going to discuss some of the stuff out here since we didn't have time. I think. Well, if we want to just, yeah, if you want to discuss. Because that one, Scott, can you help us out on number uh, 72, 2014 before I, because um, how important is it to. That's an engineering, Nick. You want to address that? We need to get that in, right? Yeah, that's basically that's going to allow us to apply to the Public Works Commission to cover 50% of your construction share for the A2 Phase 3 project. It's, to authorize the mayor to apply for grant money through the Ohio Public Works Commission. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so, so we need to do third reading on that, yeah, correct, right. Nick? Yes. All right. Yes. Um, I, can I take that back now? Okay. Um, I'd like to offer resolution number 72, 2014, for its first, second, and third reading by title only, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A resolution allowing the mayor to take steps necessary to ensure local funding participation with the Ohio Public Works Commission with regard to the widening and resurfacing, including drainage improvements and traffic control signals, further identified as PID 81656 81 with the county, uh, county route section number um, sum, State Route 82, 4.65, and declaring an emergency. And what's your pleasure? Mr. Mayor, I offer that we pass and post for uh, resolution number 72, 2014, according to law, please. Second. 
Roll call. Ms. Darrell? Yes. Mr. Engel? Yes. Ms. Hannigan? Yes. Mr. Molnar? Yes. Ms. Tully? Yes. Moving on, resolution number 73, 2014. Uh, the resolution, uh, actually, I'd like uh, some interpretation of this also, Nick, or and or Scott, as to what we're actually doing here. I can do that if you don't mind hearing from the law department. This is our uh, resolution. Uh, in order to take uh, land that's necessary for any public improvement, you have to follow the Ohio Revised Code statutory proceedings for condemnation or eminent domain. This is the first step in doing it, and that's to declare the necessity of intention. So when you uh, just passed the ordinance for the uh, grant, applying for the grant, this is also a, a, an action of council that's necessary uh, in order to go to the next step, and that is to make offers for the land that's needed and allow ODOT and their appointees to pay the money and negotiate prices for parts of land that's needed for the project. Um, once this is done, then we can proceed to the next step, and if we don't settle with a number of people. There will be other legislation to come forward and take the next step uh, for acquiring. Okay, so, so part of the normal process. Okay, yeah, we uh, just to clarify, uh, Mr. Deemer, we are not actually saying we're going to eminent domain. We're going to acquire <coughs> right of way as the mm -hmm. first step, right? Yeah, it's just declaring it necessary to, to widen the right of way. Okay, all right. Mr. Deemer, I have a question for you. Um, does um, the appraisers, uh, those were already um, okay to o ODOT, correct, sir? Correct. Okay, that's my one. Minute. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to offer Resolution 73 2014 for its first, second, and third reading by title only. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? An emergency resolution declaring the necessity and intention to appropriate for street purposes certain fee simple interests, interests and easements in and to various premises along Route 82 to facilitate its widening and resurfacing, including drainage improvements and traffic control signals, further identified as PID 81656 with the county route section number as some State Route 82, 4.65, and declaring an emergency. And what's your pleasure? I move we pass and post resolution number 73-2014, according to law. Second. Roll call. Ms. Darrell? Yes. Mr. Engel? Yes. Ms. Hannigan? Yes. Mr. Molnar? Yes. Ms. Telly? Yes. Moving on, Ordinance 74-2014. Mayor, I'd like to offer ordinance number 74, 2014, for its first reading by title only, please. Jan, if, if, if I may, I know we discussed this in, in work session, but I think this is the, the video equipment that we've been talking about. Right, we, we haven't had a chance to talk about it, so and I, we didn't talk. I Last time we talked about it, there was a lot of disagreements. Okay, all right, so, so we can hold it as yeah, first reading. I think we need to have a discussion. Oh, all right, thank you. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a purchase agreement with income in order to upgrade the city's existing um, video equipment. Next is ordinance number 75, 2014. Mr. Mayor, before I introduce ordinance 75, 2014, I'd like to ask Scott a couple questions. Uh, it's my understanding that these are the, the purchase of the, of the trucks that we were approved in the as part of the regular uh, budget for this year? Yes, sir. And they're, they're within the, the amount appropriated, so it's it's budget neutral? I mean, we've already yes, a lot of Yes, the first money. payment will begin next year. This is a key bank uh, uh, contract that we have to have council approve, and then they'll put the money in escrow. The truck's already been ordered, and then uh, they'll execute the final purchases of it. Okay. Although we haven't had a lot of opportunity, to, or we didn't have opportunity in work session, I think that because it's money that's been appropriated, I'm comfortable with offering it for a first, second, and third reading. Is everybody comfortable with that? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. thank you, Mayor. Uh, with that, I'd offer ordinance number 75, 2014, for a first, second, and third reading by title only. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? In ordinance, authorizing and directing the mayor to execute where is spelled incorrectly, and enter into a lease purchase agreement, that is two, 
with Key Government Finance, Inc. in order to finalize the purchase of two T300 Kenworth trucks configured with snowplow packages from Henderson Equipment for use by the Macedonia Service Department. And what's your pleasure? I move that we pass and post Ordinance 75, 2014, according to law. Second. Second. Roll call. Ms. Darrell? Yes. Mr. Engel? Yes. Ms. Hanneken? Yes. Mr. Mulner? Yes. Ms. Telly? Yes. Moving on, ordinance number 76, 2014. Mayor, I'd like to offer ordinance 76, 2014 for its first reading by title only. In order. <clears throat> An ordinance accepting from the Ohio EPA a section 319H non-point source implement implementation grant from the Lake Erie watershed to be used for the Macedonia Stormwater Innovation Park and authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement therefore. And what's your pleasure? Oh, I'm second. sorry, that was first reading. Ordinance number 77, 2014. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to offer ordinance number 77, 2014, and I'm looking to see what this is because we haven't discussed anything. So um, it's, it's let's a, see. It's are, are, a, we, are, are we going to be doing first, second, or third reading on this, though? Okay, we're going to do first reading. I'm going to offer it for first reading by title only, please. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a mutual aid agreement with the Summit Metro Crash Response Team. Moving on to Ordinance 78, 2014. Uh, I'm going to offer this for first, second, and third reading unless there's an objection. Any object? Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to offer Ordinance Number 78, 2014, for its First, second, and third reading by title only. In ordinance appointing Frank Pozar to the Planning Commission in order to fill a recent vacancy. Mr. Mayor, before we go on, could I ask Mr. Deemer a question on this one? Sure. Mr. Deemer, my question is not to suggest that I don't think Mr. Pozar is qualified or a man of integrity or a man that I wouldn't want to see sitting on the Planning Commission because I think he's all three of those, but I, it's, I know that he has some dealings with the building department and I think inspection and things like that. Is that going to cause a conflict for him? He does do inspections for you, is that right? He no, doesn't no. anymore? He, he retired. He retired. So he doesn't do those at no. all. All right, then I'm going to read. I've answered my own question. Very good. Thank you. Hmm. So all right. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> let's go back. Did we, uh, we? Did we all agree? For yeah. We, third okay, we, I t read it. Title. Now, you, if you choose to adopt it, that's your, okay. Not right. We now are. we're we're into adoption. Good. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that we pass and post Ordinance 78 2014 according to law. Second. Roll call. Ms. Darrell. Yes. Mr. Engel. Since I said all those nice things about Mr. Poser in my question, I guess I'm pretty obligated <laughs> to say yes. <laughs> Ms. Hannikin. Yes. Mr. Molnar. Yes. Ms. Tully. Yes. Moving on, ordinance number 79, 2014. Before I offer this ordinance, um, this is for the road striping marking. How much is in the appropriations now, and how much more would this be expending? I'm sorry. The, the amount that's currently on there is 110,162. We would have to make a transfer from 101 funds to 401 to complete this transaction. So we have the money. I mean, this is not optional, if I'm correct. Okay. That's the effort for first. Did we? But was this previously appropriated? No. 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 Here, Josephine pulled this one. Hey Jim, did we do any marking last year? Any? No. But How about the year last before that? The marking was 2012, and we spent 50, a little 000. over 50,000. Right. And we didn't do the whole and city though. Every year previous to that, we always spent anywhere from 50 to 60,000 every year, because it's every other year 
that we do the city. We do part of it, and then the following year do another part of it. We haven't done it. So what's happening is I'm starting to get a lot of complaints from, especially people, some of them not even residents, that they can't see the markings, especially like our Route 8 and 82. There's no more markings that show you the actual path you're supposed to follow. Uh, uh, I have other areas where the, uh, our markings are starting to fade. They're starting to rub away. And unfortunately, they're on some bad streets, too. I mean, people will probably get mad at me for it. Uh, marking them, but we have to. Because, Isn't it federally uh, mandated? Yes. And I actually I took a class just about roadway marking and know that that paint that's currently used is life expectancy of less than a year. Right. That's why we do an every other year program. In 2013, we didn't, but previous to that, every year, at least 50 to 60,000 was, was spent. So, so, so if I understand, this is an appropriation, at which point, if it's appropriated tonight, you're going to then go out for bids? Yes, sir. And, that, and we can't go out to bids until we appropriate it? Yes. In light of the fact that uh, income is coming in significantly higher than what we thought, and there was some, even some discussion of attempting to do an extra road, uh, I know that this is more than we paid, did in 2012, yeah. but mm -hmm. I think right. I think catching up makes sense, and it doesn't, it looks like it doesn't catch us up completely, and I know that some of the roads do need, uh, need some striping, so I, I would, I would support this. So we can do in three readings? Three Thank readings. you. I just want to make sure everyone had the answers, because we hadn't talked about it. I haven't so, done it yet. So you've, you have offered it, Mr. No, Wright. I have not. No, not yet. No, I get my questions on the table oh, first. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can you okay. pass now I won't. Stella, pass that down to her. Josephine pulled this for me, uh, Jan, um, just prior to the meeting, um, is how much we paid uh, DuPont, uh, the company there, 50000 Duramark in uh, 2012. Yeah, that was, that was 2012. That was Duramark. Previous year, before the, after that was 52. The year before that was 54. The year before that was 60. Okay. But we so, didn't do any last year. Right. And we didn't do none last year. So I'm what? actually trying to catch up. Right. Now, next year, I'll probably ask you for 50 to 60,000 so we can continue where we left off. Could I ask you why we didn't do it last year? That we had the most money ever. Uh, the money wasn't, in, wasn't appropriated at that time. Did you ask for it and they didn't give it to you? I, I, I wasn't involved in the budget in 2013. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I'd like to offer ordinance number 79, 2014, first, first, second, and third reading by title only. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, it would help if I read it. An ordinance authorizing the appropriation of funds from the unappropriated fund balance for the 2014 road striping marking program. Mr. Demet, may I ask a question? Sure. May Ms. Tully add to that the, and authorize him to advertise for bids on this, or should it be a separate motion? If he's, she's. It should be a separate motion. Okay, so remember to do that under motion. Amend the motion or make a separate motion? Separate no. Motion. Okay. Uh, under. Yeah. So I'd like to um, ask that we adopt and post according to law ordinance number 79 2014 second roll call miss darrell <coughs> yes mr engel yes miss hannikin yes mr molnar yes miss teller yes Four. before we move on mayor may i also like to make a motion authorizing the service department to go out for bids for the 2014 road striping marking program second. all in favor aye, aye. aye. Opposed? Moving on, Ordinance 80, 2014. No, it's not me. Uh, I'll make it. Uh, That's that supplemental one, the breakdown. I don't, I don't know. Scott, we haven't had a chance in executive, our work session to discuss 80. Would you please, which is uh, appropriations? Uh, would you please explain what, what the appropriations are about? Yes, sir. The legal fees, the first line is to be able to pay the contractor attorney his fees that are due relatively in August when we get those July billings. We're estimating that to be on the safe side, $25,000. <clears> and the, the following line, the supplies and materials, the tree fund. We, uh, I think I've uh, copied counsel on a lot of uh, and, uh, material about that. and. Um, 
we identified two transactions that were uh, brought over in 2011 and 2012 that were posted erroneously into the planning commission and uh, those two transactions were 22,500 and I talked to the auditor and we can make that adjustment ourselves. but even when we make the adjustment and the money goes back into the 223 fund I would still need counsel for this approval to make that appropriations so uh, Jim can decide to plant any more trees or wherever <coughs> he's got to go and uh, there's a, we've had a meeting earlier this week with the mayor and Mr. Diglitano and our arborist and uh, we're trying to figure out what how to make that fund whole because there's been some trees that were uh, purchased and they died and then they were replaced and uh, so we're trying to straighten that out now but at least at, at the beginning of this to get this problem solved uh, one the first step is to take that 225 and put it back into the tree fund and there were some trees that were actually um, uh, we overspent on some sub some divisions so we might have to actually invoice some of the subdivisions where we had planted more trees than what we had uh, initially got in so the route 82 phase 3 engineering three thousand dollars that was originally in, in the budget Go ahead. that was phase one okay <clears throat> that was originally in the budget and I had a purchase order in January and uh, that's mostly for GPD's work on that and there was about two thousand dollars that was drawn out of that and uh, and I had canceled that purchase order by air because that was the same fund number that I was using for uh, the route 82 or the route 271 ramp so when we had another bill come through and I already had closed that purchase order I needed that three thousand dollars so it's budget neutral that money's in the fund but I needed to get that <clears throat> so I don't get a citation from the auditor the Ohio EPA litter grant was a grant that was uh, done by Janelle and uh, she had uh, written that early in spring and that's for the 2015 litter pickup uh, spring earth day so we'll have dumpsters here roll off dumpsters and uh, educational materials free tree handout and uh, so the uh, they grant they uh, awarded us half now and then half upon completion so I want to put that money in the fund and appropriate and just do a purchase order so we have that uh, available for next year because it's some some of the expenditures might come out as early as late fall depending on what however she manages that and the last one the big ticket item the four hundred thousand dollars that's uh, the route 82 ODOT road right away acquisitions now that's a 2080 match and originally we have that money appropriated in a purchase order roughly the estimate was going to be four hundred thousand our share would be eighty thousand dollars but uh, we had a meeting with uh, ODOT and because we're acquiring those properties at first the the uh, the, the checks must come from the city of Macedonia and uh, John from ODOT said that as soon as we cut those checks and then uh, invoice him he'll turn it around in a week so this is budget neutral it's just a matter of our we're, we're 